This is the second problem in the concavity section. So for example two, it says determine the open intervals of concavity and any points of inflection. So we have this function here. Well, here I do have something to consider for my domain. My denominator can never equal zero, otherwise the whole function is undefined. So these values um, would not be in my domain. So I'm gonna solve this really quick and I get x cannot equal plus or minus one, which means my number line has got some holes in it. It's got a hole here at negative one and it's got a hole here at positive one. Now I do still need to find my critical numbers to see if this number line is gonna get broken up into any more intervals. So let's find the first derivative. And here, because I have two terms in the denominator, I will need to do the quotient rule. So low d high minus high d low over low squared. So I'm gonna distribute this 2x, I get 2x minus 2x cubed, and here this and this will become positive 2x. So I'm really distributing a positive 2x to here and here. So positive 2x cubed and positive 16x. So that is going to cause the two terms with 2x squared to reduce. And therefore, just leaving me with, um, actually that would be 18x. Okay, now, but that's only the first derivative. So I do have to do the quotient rule again to get the second derivative. So low d high minus high d low. And the chain rule does need to apply. All over low squared. So I end up with, I can expand this out. So I will have one minus two x squared plus x to the fourth times 18 and then here I can multiply all of these monomials together and I will get a positive um, 18 times 2 times 2 is 72x times 1 minus x squared. Actually I think 1 minus x squared will reduce so we probably should do that first. Because you notice that each term has a 1 minus x squared in it. So we should reduce that. So I'm going to have 1 minus x squared out. Then I'm going to have 18 times 1 minus x squared. One of them that will still be left over from this factor. Minus, I can still multiply my monomials together. which will give me a positive 72x squared, but this one minus x squared is being factored out. And in the denominator, you have one minus x squared squared, squared, which is to the fourth power downstairs. So then this will reduce with one of them here, leaving me with only three downstairs. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute my 18. And so then I end up with this here, which will reduce to um, 72 minus 18 is 54. So 54 x squared plus 18 over one minus x squared cubed. So let's see, I do need to figure out where 
this is um, equal to zero and where it is undefined. So it equals zero when the numerator equals zero. Um, and if I minus 18 on both sides, I get this. If I divide by 54 on both sides and reduce, I get negative one third. But when you take the square root of negative one third, you won't get any real numbers. Um, therefore, you aren't gonna get any critical numbers from this particular equation. However, if I do figure out where um, the second derivative is undefined, I can take the cube root of both sides. I can minus one on both sides. I could divide by negative one on both sides. And I could take the square root on both sides and get x equals plus or minus one. However, there are no, the function is not defined at negative one and one. So even though these are sort of like critical numbers, they do break up my interval, they are not included in my domain. But our interval is already broken up into three sections and this did not break it up further, okay? So what we need to do now is just test each interval from what we have here. So if I test a number in here, I'm gonna plug in, say negative two, into my second derivative to find the concavity. In this section, I'll use zero. So f double prime of zero to find the concavity in this interval. And then a positive two here to find the concavity in that section there. So let's go plug in these values into our second derivative, okay? So I'm gonna program my calculator with this function here. So 54x squared plus 18 divided by one minus x squared raised to the third. And let's plug in negative two. Negative two store x, plug in my function, and I get a negative value. Zero store x. And I get a positive number. And then two store x. and I get a negative number. So I get concave downward for this interval, concave upward for this interval, and concave downward for this interval. So for my concavity, I have two intervals for concave down, from negative infinity to negative one, and from positive one to infinity. And I have one interval for concave upward, that would be from negative one to one. However, I have no points of inflection. And that is because although the concavity changes from downward to upward around the negative one, and it changes from upward to downward around the one, these two x values are not in the domain of the function. Therefore, there is no point there at those particular x values. That is why I do not have any points of inflection for this particular problem. What's gonna happen is I most likely have asymptotes. So this is going downward to negative infinity and then on the other side, it's going upward toward positive infinity. Similarly here, this one's going upward to positive infinity on the left of one and then downward to negative infinity on the right of one to make that concavity.